All right, in the comments below, yes or no, is Mike LaFleur back as the New York Jets offensive coordinator next year? Bonus points for your reasons why or why not. Now, Robert Sala, he was asked the same question. He was pretty non-committal. You know, he kind of gave a coach speak type of answer. We're going to evaluate that when we get to it. We get to it. Now, if someone like Belichick says that or Tomlin, you don't really make anything of it. But Sala has been not hesitant to fully back struggling players or coaches in the past. We saw it with Zach Wilson all the way up until and throughout the benching. He's going to be here in 2023. Zach's going to be uh, fine. We're working on him. He's improving. Um, last year, Ulbrich. Uh, when the defense was horrendous, was getting all the criticism, and he said, we have all the faith in the world in our guys, we're going to get this fixed. And this one, just non-committal, right? Pretty terse response from Coach Salva. And now, for large portions of the season, I have defended Michael LaFleur because I'm like, look, you have a comedy of offensive line injuries, and you have horrendous quarterback play. But that doesn't mean that Michael LaFleur is a good offensive coordinator, right? It's possible that the Jets had bad injury luck on the O-line. They had bad quarterback play. And Michael LaFleur is a bad offensive coordinator. In fact, I would argue that all those things being true are the perfect recipe to score 15 points over your last three games without a touchdown in your last 13 quarters of the season. Okay. The Buffalo Bills kick returner scored Two touchdowns in the first two and a half quarters today. The same number of touchdowns the Jets have a team and as a team in their last 13 and a half quarters of the year. It's crazy. We just watched Josh Dobbs, third stringer, been on like four different teams this year, on the road, behind an injured, injured offensive line against a Jaguars team fighting for the division, and Josh Jobs is able to put up more points in that game than the Jets have the last three games combined with four different quarterbacks Taking the field. Uh, that is, this is some historically putrid offensive performance in recent weeks. And, you know, yesterday, did I expect the Jets to score 30 points of Flacco? No. Did I expect the Jets to score 20 points of Flacco? No. Did I expect them to maybe eke out a measly touchdown? Maybe get inside the 10-yard line and have a, a pass that was thrown into the end zone against a Miami Dolphins t defense that is bad and was absolutely injured and beleaguered, especially in the secondary? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe a throw that lands in the end zone. But no. <laughs> I mean, the Jets have one loss this year where they have allowed more than 18 points. If they get 24 points, they are undefeated. If they get slightly above average offensive production, they're undefeated this year. This offense was putrid. And what is Mike LaFleur's calling card? Like if I were to sell you on JD staying the Jets GM, it's easy because he's drafted four all pro caliber talents in the last two years in AVT, Sauce, Brees, and Garrett. Robert Sala, he's brought his San Francisco defense out east. Does that mean he's a great head coach? No, not yet. A lot of things he has to get better at. But with Mike LaFleur, if, I, if I'm Mike LaFleur's agent and I'm trying to sell you on his resume as OC in the Jets for two years, I can give you some excuses and some of them are legitimate, but I can't give you any reasons why. You know what I mean? Like if I was a fan of another team that needed an offensive coordinator and Mike LaFleur came available, eh, no thanks. <laughs> You know, I think that maybe he needs to go back to being an offensive assistant, go get a job back with the Niners or his brother. Um, but my gut tells me he's not back with the New York Jets. And we'll talk football soon.